hello, hello, everybody. All right, y'all. Let's do this. Who is excited? I want to dive in pretty quickly because there's a lot to cover. Like I said, I could talk about this for hours, but I've paired it back to the essentials for you guys so that we can fit it into the 30 minutes. Um, and also, uh, I just want to make sure that we don't miss out on a couple of questions at the end. I had you guys ask me some questions yesterday when I posted, so I've got those. But if you have a question about crystals and essential oils and you already know what that question is, feel free to type that into the comments um, along with your favorites. So, okay, guys, we're going to dive in. So for those of you who do not already know me, this is your first time to see my face. My name is Erin Holland. I am a crystal healer. I'm a crystal jewelry designer, as you see here. Uh, I am also a Reiki healer, an essential oil enthusiast, a life coach, a wellness teacher, and so many other things. I wear so many hats in the wellness field, but my main passion is that I am the founder of the Ivy and Light online wellness community. And the purpose of our community is to make wellness uh, accessible and affordable for all. So the idea is that you would be able to come to one spot and learn about all the different healing methods all at once so that you can go through and see which ones are best for your life, for your lifestyle, for your time, for your energy, for your particular goals, right? And part of that is my personal passion for the importance of science in the natural healing world. I truly believe that even though much of these, these natural healing methods feel like magic, they are very easily explained by science. And then even once you explain the science, the quantum physics behind it all, it is still so magical. And we all have the ability to understand that science. And once we have that knowledge, we truly have the power to be our own advocate, to be our own healer, to take control of our health and to be able to heal and grow a life we love. So that is where I come from. I began using crystals and essential oils Several years ago now, they were both very important in my personal healing journey and dealing with hypothyroidism, with hormone balance, with stress relief, and so many other things. So I have been combining them together for a long time, and that's one of my favorite, favorite ways uh, to do my personal healing practice is to combine essential oils, crystals, and affirmations together. But now it's becoming more and more popular, right? I used to be the weirdo, and now everybody is jumping on the crystals and oils bandwagon, which is awesome. I'm super excited that we are all on the same playing field here. But as I started to see people using crystals and oils together, I realized something that made me super concerned. People do not understand that there is a safety issue here with when you pair crystals and essential oils together. And the same is true with essential oils. So all my essential oil people out there, you guys know when you start explaining to someone how to use essential oils, you need to explain to them how to use them safely, right? Okay, the same thing is true of crystals plus oils. You can't just use them together willy-nilly or else you might end up with some significant negative results. And you don't want that for yourself and you certainly don't want it for people that you're helping, especially if you are in the business of helping others, right? We want to be able to give people good advice, advice that they can take and that they will achieve positive results. So we're going to talk today about essential oils and crystals and combining them powerfully, but most importantly, safely, right? Before we dive in, I do want to get super clear on why would you use essential oils and crystals together in the first place? Like, why is this a thing, right? We don't just do stuff because it's a trend. We want to do things because they're actually super powerful. They actually have a positive benefit in your life. So I'm going to explain like the super nutshell to you guys right now, um, because I literally have a workshop on this, could talk about this for hours, but here's the nutshell, okay? Crystals, first of all, the power behind crystals is their structure. A crystal is actually any solid substance that its atoms, ions, or molecules have a repeating pattern that extends into three dimensions. I'm gonna say that again. A crystalline structure, a crystal is any solid substance whose atoms, molecules, or ions repeat in a pattern in three dimensions. What this means in common language is just that the crystalline structure is incredibly solid, stable, strong, and creates a pure and stable vibration, all right? So when a crystal comes into contact with your body, 
it has a very strong and stable vibration. Your body, which is made up of tons of different minerals and substances and lots of water, which has a very unstable vibration, changes very easily, your unstable body okay, is affected by the stability of the frequency of the crystal. And when they come, into, come together, they end up aligning, this is called entrainment, where the vibration of the crystal and the similar vibration of your body, but slightly out of tune, they actually begin to vibrate at the same speed. They entrain, they join the same frequency pattern so that no energy is lost. All right, so that is the power of a crystal. That's how you can pair a specific crystal with a specific body system or a specific chakra or area of the body or a specific emotion, and then enjoy the positive benefits of that realigning, that restabilizing of your natural frequency. So for those of you guys, I know a lot of you in here use essential oils. So you may already know this, but it's always good to have the refresher. The most powerful part of essential oils, the thing that gets us so darn excited is their size. They're teeny tiny, right? A drop of essential oil contains 40 million trillion molecules, each of which is less than 300 AMUs, that's uh, atomic mass units, smaller than 300 atomic mass units in weight. Because they're so teeny, teeny, tiny, they pass through our skin, they pass into our bloodstream, they pass even through the blood-brain barrier. They can get into every single cell in your body. So they go throughout the entire body in a matter of minutes, get into every cell, bring their healing properties to that cell, and help to restore a desirable health within each cell, right? That's how essential oils work. Now imagine combining the two. Imagine taking the vibration of a crystal, the tininess of essential oils, putting them together, and now as those essential oils hit every cell of your body, they are bringing that vibration of the crystal along with them. Whew, right? Incredible. That is why we combine crystals and essential oils, okay? Now, because they're taking that vibration of the crystal with them, because they're so tiny and they're getting into every cell of the body, the safety of this, you can kind of begin to understand the importance, okay? You, there are things you want in every cell of your body and things you don't want in every cell of your body. So what's the big deal with safety and crystals and essential oils? When we use them the standard way, the easiest way, the most popular way, how are we using them? We're using them in a roller bottle, right? We've got our crystals inside of a roller bottle. The oil, you put whatever your favorite oil blend in there. Pop the roller roll it on, and you're golden. Super easy, pretty, fun DIYs. Use all your favorite blends. But many, many crystals over time dissolve into liquid, into water or oil. And so if you're storing an essential oil with crystals inside of it, it matters which crystals are in there because there are substances in crystals that you don't want necessarily in every single cell of your body, right? All right, so how do you tell if it's safe to store a crystal inside of your essential oil? First thing, and this applies to every way, the easiest way is a roller bottle. The next easiest way, the pretty easy way to use crystals and essential oils is to use something like your diffuser jewelry, right? So you're putting a drop of essential oil onto your lava bead, and then you've got your crystals here. So you're getting the energy benefit from both at the same time. All right, so that's the pretty easy way. The really still not that hard way is to take, say, a citrine, take a crystal, put it in your hand while you're diffusing oils, while you're breathing in essential oils, while you're meditating, and you're getting the benefit of both at the same time. But for the easiest way, the roller bottle, okay, how do you know if it's safe? One, and this applies to everything, is it real? So, if you use essential oils, we all understand the importance of the potency, the purity, the safety of that essential oil. Same thing goes for a crystal. Is it natural? Did it actually come from the ground or is it man-made? Is it unheated and is it undyed? So if you heat a crystal, you've changed its vibration. 
if you've dyed it, well, now you've introduced all sorts of other things. What's in the dye? How is that affecting the vibration of the crystal, right? If you get a natural, raw, unchanged crystal, that's how you know you're getting those crystal benefits. So if you're getting a fake crystal or one that's had something done to it, you're just not going to get the crystal benefits. We're not even talking about safety here. You're just not going to see the promised results, right? The second thing, does that crystal have a Mohs hardness of six or more? Okay, does it have a Mohs hardness of six or more? And the Mohs hardness scale is a scientific scale that you use to track the hardness of any crystal, which means how easily will it scratch, how easily will it break, how easily does it dissolve into liquid. And the higher the number, the stronger, the less likely to dissolve into liquid that crystal is. So you want to make sure that any crystal you're storing inside of an oil or water or any liquid is at least a six on that scale. That takes out a ton of crystals because they'll just dissolve right into your oil. Over time, you don't have the crystal anymore. And also all of that was getting into your body, okay? So the third thing is, does it contain any harmful materials, metals, chemicals? So if I'm holding... Uh, this mahogany obsidian, okay, in my hand, on my hand, it's not dissolving into my body. So it doesn't really matter what this is made up of. The important thing is the vibration. If this gets absorbed into my body through the essential oil, well, now I need to know what's in here, what got dissolved. So many, many crystals contain things like aluminum, copper, iron, arsenic, zinc, barium, asbestos, do you want that in every single cell of your body? No, we don't want asbestos in every single cell of our body. So you need to avoid the crystals that have those harmful chemicals. So what I'm going to give you guys real quick is a list of the popular crystals that you should be avoiding that unfortunately should not be inside of the crystal roller bottle. Okay. So amazonite, azurite, hematite and magnetic hematite, Lapis lazuli, malachite, pyrite, tiger's eye, aquamarine and beryl, demortiorite, emerald, garnet, iolite, kyanite, labradorite, lapidolite, moonstone, ruby, sapphire, smoky quartz, sodalite, sunstone, tourmaline, turquoise, zoocyte, morganite, azurite, chrysocolla, chrysoprase, bogeystone, aura crystals, bumblebee jasper, dalmatian jasper. That's a long list, guys, right? So first things first, I'm willing to bet that if you've got a set of these at home that you bought offline, you've got some of those inside your essential oils right now. When I first thought, oh, this is so exciting. Now they're pairing crystals and oils. Maybe I'll go buy some online, even though I sell crystals. I don't know. I still want to just buy them from someone else. And then I got online and I was like, wait, that's toxic. That's toxic. That's toxic. And out of these, the chakra collections, the 12 types, all these different kinds, at least half of them, and in many cases more, are ones that you should not be storing in an essential oil. So if you own those, I love you so much. As Martha says, I love you so much, but please, please toss them out or take out the oil. I'm sorry, you can't use that oil anymore. If you want to be safe, you can take the crystals and you can put them around your house, you can use them in other ways, but you cannot store the things from this list, the crystals from this list in an essential oil or in water or in any other liquid. It's just not safe, okay? The second thing is, I just ran through that really quickly. Even if you have a pen and paper and you're doing your best, there's no way you wrote those all down, right? So I have a list that I created a PDF that has all of the unsafe oils and a list of some that you can use, all right? So I'm going to pop this into the comments. Y'all tell me if you see that. Hopefully you do. All right. So this list you can grab, and that is my sim super simple, downloadable, printable list of, of all the ones you should not be using inside of your essential oils. And then what I did was I, for each chakra, I picked a crystal that is totally safe that you can go grab and you can put inside of your roller bottles and it's totally fine. Now, if you, I want you guys to raise your hand, leave a comment. If you're totally cool with chakra healing, you understand that, you're good to go, you know how that works. Awesome. 
But for those who might not know, I will explain it really quickly. So your chakras are essentially the seven energy centers in uh, traditional healing. But scientifically, it's all of the areas along your spine, the seven different areas where you have bunches of nerve endings, nerve ganglia, right? And they are all bunched together. Okay. So all of those, there's seven of them starting at your tailbone, then right around your, um, right under your belly button. There's another center of nerves that goes to your ovaries and all of that good stuff. Then there's one right under your rib cage. Okay. That's right near your liver and your gallbladder. And then you have one at your heart, throat, brow, and crown. So each of these bundles of nerves is known in traditional healing as a chakra. And they are sending nerve impulses to different areas of the body, to different organs of the body, to different um, things that the body needs to do, right? Different processes. So to have a crystal and an essential oil for each of those areas of the body just makes it super simple. It's the easiest way to get started. So I'm going to go through uh, and let you know. Oh, awesome. Lynn, energy healer. Yes, you've got it. Um, Elise, I'm going to get to your question in just a second. So here we go. Is it on the simple safe list? All right. For each chakra, I'm going to read through them. Onyx for your root chakra. Carnelian for your sacral chakra. Citrine for your solar plexus. Rose quartz and moss agate for your heart. Moss agate is also good for your spine, uh, for vitality in general. Blue lace agate for your throat. Uh, amethyst for your third eye and clear quartz for your crown chakra. Now, Elise, I got a freebie from YL and I have no idea what crystal is in the roller bottle. Guess what? If it's the one that I got because you went to the, uh, the Young Living Convention, right? It's the bottle that has the purple crystals. That's amethyst. That is safe. All right. So one of the things, and I don't want to go too much into a question of what essential oil company uh, but one of the reasons I do use Young Living is because when I heard that Gary had been doing research about using frequency vibration in the soil when he was growing the plants to make the essential oils, and he was changing the vibration because he knew that finding the optimal vibration for that particular plant would then allow that plant to grow healthier, to have more of the constituents that we want in those plants. So immediately I knew he gets it. He gets vibrational frequency. He gets the energy healing aspect of this. He gets this, the thing that applies to crystals, applies to essential oils too. He's got it. He understands, right? And so I, I already had um, faith that there was an understanding on that level. And then when it came out at convention that they were sending us the roller bottle and it had amethyst, I was like, oh, phew. <laughs> they put the right one in the bottle. They put a safe one. Um, another way that you can use crystals that you wouldn't be able to store in the bottle is in that necklace, right? The pretty necklace that, that everyone got, which has, I believe it was clear quartz and moonstone. Moonstone is not safe inside the bottle, but it's safe on the outside because it's not going to dissolve into the liquid. So those pretty uh, bottle holders that are necklaces with the crystals on the outside, it's totally fine to adorn your roller bottle on the outside with crystals, any kind, but it's what's inside staying in the liquid or Oh, this is not the other, oh, this one has the roller bottle or this where the roller bottle part is your actual crystal, right? They have pretty ones, rose quartz, hematite, all this stuff, but hematite, tiger eye, all these ones that they put on the roller bottles. No, no, no. You don't want that touching the, the crystal either. Um, so all of that to say on the outside, on your jewelry, near your lava beads, all that's fine, but just not stored inside the bottle. But you can use clear quartz, amethyst, blue lace agate, really any agate, rose quartz, citrine, carnelian, and onyx, okay? And that will cover all of your bases for the chakras. So really quickly, we're already at 23 minutes. Ah, I could talk about this for forever. But super quickly, if you have a question and you want to ask me, um, please do. Let's see. Um, so Stephanie asks, so as long as we select a safe, a safe crystal, we can add any Young Living oil to it safety-wise. Absolutely. You're not going to, the oil is not going to change whether or not the crystal dissolves. 
the crystal itself is a dissolving crystal or not a dissolving crystal. It has those uh, metals in it you don't want or it doesn't, right? And so the oil doesn't matter. It's kind of the same thing as if you hear, hear people talk about making blends. If you're just looking for it to smell like pumpkin, like put whatever smells like pumpkin to you, pumpkin spice, right? But if you're going for a particular healing benefit, then you want to look at the pairing that you're doing, how much you're pairing of each one. Um, and then, so in that case, which essential oil and which crystal you use would be very different. You would actually want to think about that because you want to match up the benefits. You wouldn't want to do a calming essential oil with a really energizing crystal at bedtime, right? But it's not, it's not going to be a safety issue in the sense of, of citrine dissolving because citrine is never going to dissolve and, and it doesn't have anything you would want inside the oil. All right. Um, so Astrid, if you scroll up, there is a list that you can download that has all the safe crystals and then all of the most popular unsafe crystals. It's not an exhaustive list um, because it is, it would, I would literally run out of <laughs> paper if I tried to make an exhaustive list, but it's all the main ones that you see. And I made sure and looked around at Etsy and Amazon, all that stuff, and made sure that I checked the ones I was seeing sold a lot and made sure that they were on that unsafe list, list if they were unsafe. All right, guys. So I actually had a couple other things I wanted to go over with you. Maybe I will make this a longer workshop um, in my personal group. We'll see because I, there's some stuff I didn't get to, but you've got the most important part, which is absolutely, absolutely check that list before you store an essential oil with a crystal. I'm going to run through really quickly for you as I do my little plug here because I couldn't find safe crystal and essential oil options to suggest to my people, to my community. I just decided, well, I guess I'm making them. So in my shop now at ivyandlight.com, you can find these crystal roller bottles. All right, so they have um, the crystals inside, the crystal chips, if you can see that. And then you just pour your own essential oils on top, or for those who are not into essential oils yet, you can also uh, store the essential, you can also get it with the essential oil in there. All right, so I have it where I provide the blend, or you can just get the crystals because I know a lot of my Young Living people, you've already got these oils at home. You don't need me to send them to you, right? You just really want the crystals. So I will go through sneaky peek for you guys. Never done this for anyone. So yay, yay, yay. I'm going to tell you what I pair for each of the ones that's in my shop. All right. So clear quartz. I have a roller bottle with that. Clarity blend or if you want a single, rabbit Sarah. Amethyst plus Envision or frankincense, blue lace agate plus stress away or chamomile, uh, rose quartz plus joy or bergamot, moss agate plus valor or northern lights black spruce. Then there are three more that you could use, but I have not found a, a natural undyed untreated source for these yet. So as soon as I do, I'll add them to the shop. But the other three would, that I want to have are citrine plus abundance or ginger, Carnelian plus citrus fresh or orange, and then onyx plus release or sage. All right. Um, yeah, so the best place to get, Marty, to your question, the best place to get crystal so that you know it's pure is from somebody you trust. So it's, it is hard. This is why I only have five. It is hard to find crystal chips that are small enough to go into an essential oil bottle, okay, that are also natural, undyed, untreated. It's not easy. And then when I buy them, they are from places where I have to buy in wholesale. I have to spend, sometimes it's like $300 per time to get them. So it's not realistic for you to be going and buying a whole bunch of these. And it kept me from doing it for a long time because I had to put so much money into it, right? In order to offer it on my Etsy shop and in my um, ivyandlight.com. But so it, the best thing for you to do is find a crystal provider that you trust so that you can get exactly what crystal you want. The same thing goes for my tumbled stones. So I also sell all the tumbles and all of my jewelry, right? I do that work for you to make sure that I'm finding a reliable source um, that is sourcing them properly themselves, that hasn't done anything to it. And then I give my word to you that that's what I'm giving you every single time. I also sage cleanse 
the crystals to take any of the negative energies off of them and Reiki infuse them so that you have that boosted positive energy. That's a whole other process that I could, I could talk about another time. Um, but all of that stuff is really important when you're choosing who to purchase from for sure. So guys, my pitch to you, uh, I'm a minute over. So shout it out if you want more crystal or oil lives here in the group. Um, but my pitch to you guys is if you want to try crystals and oils, you've already got the oils um, or you've already got some roller bottles. I sell these in the shop, right? As I told you, if you have no idea about crystals, don't know where to start, not even sure they work, would love to know the science behind them. One of the most important things that I do in my business is teach. I love to teach. I love to share the science. As I said at the beginning, the science behind natural healing is so amazing. So I actually have an intro to crystal healing workshop that you can purchase on my site. And that can come either by itself or with a crystal bundle that comes with a clear quartz roller bottle with the oil in it and a chakra set and a sage bundle for cleansing all of it. All right. So you can grab all of that on my website. Then you'll know all the science behind crystal healing. I also go through some of the safety stuff in there too for essential oils. You can take that information, share it with your people on your essential oils team, make sure they're doing it safely. Uh, you know, make sure that you're doing it safely for yourself and getting all the benefits so that you know how the crystals work so that then you can do the fun of pairing them with the essential oils. My other thing that is super, super, super exciting, and I'm going to give you guys another link here if I can find it. I am creating a crystals plus essential oils course that is going to be seven modules, seven different topics within this so that you are using crystals with uh, safety and power, essential oils, and learning how to pair them together, learning how to do what I call a power trio, crystals, essential oils, and affirmations, meditating with crystals and oils, different rollerball blends, different ways that you can pair them together, the safety of that, um, also how to make crystal elixirs, and how you could use your vitality oils with your crystal elixirs, and then chakra healing, all the basics of that and emotional healing with crystals and essential oil. So that course is coming as soon as I get enough people on the wait list. So you guys are the first to get the opportunity to get onto the wait list. And I'm gonna pop that into the comments for you here too. That wait list is gonna come with a discount. So if you're interested in this at all, all you're giving me is your name and your email address just to say, hey, yeah, I'm excited, I wanna know more. And when I get at least 20 people on that list, then I'll start to put together the course, tell you guys, the uh, cost, the timing, all that good stuff, all right? So definitely, if you're interested at all, get on that wait list. Let's get that going. If you have other questions about essential oils and you, you didn't get to ask it here or I missed it accidentally, I didn't see it in the comments, um, shoot me a, a message real quick and I'll either see if I can answer it quickly for you or if I can direct you to one of my resources to get that question answered for you. Guys, thank you so much. Um, I think I got all of the questions. I hope so. Oh, what's the best way to clean them? I did want to say that. No one hate me for going five minutes over. All right. When you're done with the oil, take out your crystals. You're going to want to get the oil off. Not Essential oils don't go bad. We know this, but carrier oils do. So you don't want to leave old carrier oil for months and months and months to go rancid in your bottle. So you can take just a tiny bit of the thieves uh, dish soap or the thieves cleaner, rinse it off very quickly, towel dry it. The good news is because these crystals don't dissolve in water, it is safe to cleanse them with water. There are many, many crystals that you should not cleanse with water. They're on that not safe list, hint, hint. Um, and those you would cleanse with sage. But to get the oil off, you're going to want to use a thieves, just a tiny bit of the thieves dish soap and it'll clean the crystals right off. Then you can put them back, clean your bottle, obviously, put them back in your bottle and put in a new blend. All right, guys, thank you so much for joining me. This was delightful. Um, I loved being able to see all of your comments, being able to see so many people here. Thank you, thank you, thank you. If you need a link to any of my information, my YouTube channel, my free group where we talk about crystals, oils, meditation, all that good stuff, leave me a comment below or shoot me a message. I am always happy to help so passionate about this. I want you guys to use crystals and oils, but I want you to do it safely. And I want you to share with your teams how to do it safely too. So love and blessings to you all until next time.
and have a fantastic weekend. Bye.